Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Oh, oh, oh my God. Wow. Oh. So, before I came to Utah, I had Dead Horse Point on my map as a place to visit and a potential good Milky Way photograph. But I visited the other day, a couple of days ago, and the view is spectacular. Like, it's so vast, it's staggering, the landscape is amazing. But here's the thing, I don't think it's going to make a good Milky Way photograph, because at night, the light is very flat, so I don't think there's going to be much three-dimensional sort of feel to the landscape with its canyons and rock formations. I think it's just going to be really flat, a big, open, flat area. It's one of those views that looks amazing to the naked eye, but under flat light, it's just not going to make a good photograph. But I found a point on Google Maps just outside of the state park, and for the past couple of days, I've been trying to get there. There's a number of dirt roads in the area, and each and every one I go down, I get to a point where either the road just stops and disappears, or kind of need a 4x4 four four to get over some rocky obstacles or ditches and I just don't want to risk getting the van stuck because I'm in the middle of nowhere there's no reception here and if I have to walk somewhere to get reception or find somebody it's 42 degrees here every day in Utah it's horrible it's really draining me this dirt road has got me 3.2 kilometers away from that potential viewpoint so I'm going to walk the rest of the way play it safe not get my van stuck and uh, not gonna lie, I'm not looking forward to the hike because I've been hiking quite a lot this past week. I haven't had much sleep. <laughs> I'm absolutely drained. I'm at the very end of my energy levels, but the potential of this photograph is big enough for me to push through it. So, about halfway, I'm going at a good pace, about five kilometers an hour, which is good, so I'll definitely get there before it gets dark, which is really important because I need to scout the area. It's a bit of a cliffside location with a huge drop by the looks of Google Maps, and so I need to see it in the daytime. I need to do a bit of a risk assessment, I need to plan my compositions, and I need to make sure that there's no dodgy holes or places where I might trip up and fall and die. <laughs> So the sun should set at any moment now. It's probably going to take me another 20 minutes, if that. And uh, I should have a nice bit of twilight light to see what I'm doing, but <sighs> time to keep going. Oh yes, what a view. This is incredible. I think this is gonna add so much three-dimensionality to the landscape compared to Dead Horse Point, which is over there somewhere. There it is. And the Milky Way should line up with these two vertical towers at about 1 a.m. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. What a view. Actually, let me show you some of my compositions. So I'm thinking of doing a really wide panorama like this. The Milky Way is going to be vertical with these towers dominating the center of the image. And then over to this side, there's a little bit of foreground. You can see that sheer drop, oh my God. Potential for a nice vertical panorama here. A little tree in the foreground. Oh, look at that and then some Milky Way in the sky. And then just down here, if I come down a little bit to this ledge, a little bit closer to that tree, I can shoot here and I can stand up there 
get some nice separation on my silhouette to the background sky. And I'll probably do that first when the Milky Way is a bit more over here and that will balance out the frame. And then when the Milky Way is more vertical and in line with the towers, I'll focus on centering those in the wide landscape. So I like to have some sugar when I go hiking. Just gives you a really nice boost. Haribo Tropi Fuji, number one. They are amazing. They're so juicy and tasty. And they got a nice hard, not hard, but like soft hard shell. Um, that basically means they don't melt into one big mess when they left out in the heat. So they're amazing. Same with Jelly Babies, they don't melt into one big mess. They're also pretty amazing. Um, I found these in a gas station. They're literally called lifesavers. <laughs> they're certainly not saving my life right now, but maybe on the walk back, they will definitely be lifesavers, but they're not bad. Just started. My first image, keeping it nice and simple, just shooting with the 14mm lens. I'm going to do one frame for the foreground and then one tracked frame for the sky. Probably going to focus that at the foreground. And yes, it's technically a panorama. And normally in panoramas, I do 50% overlap. But because I'm going to manually blend the sky onto the foreground, I only need a tiny strip of overlap. So I'm just going to cut out my foreground exposures, probably three or four shots to focus stack, and then get the star tracker on and track that sky. A little bit of cloud, but it's actually looking quite nice. I think it adds something to the image. And I think it's adding a little bit of glow to the stars, which is nice. Right, so I'm just waiting for this five minute exposure to finish. I've put the hydrogen alpha filter in, so only hydrogen alpha light is coming through, which means not much light is coming through. So I have to do five minutes try and get enough light and enough detail so that should be the last exposure for this composition so this was my foreground exposure i didn't need to focus stack because i ended up cropping that rock out anyway and captured an image of the sky tracked at three minutes and this is with my astro modified a7 IV. i then put the hydrogen alpha filter in and captured this image it comes out really red but then i convert it to black and white there's a video on my channel about hydrogen alpha filters by the way i then need to add this hydrogen alpha data to the colored image which i captured with my astro modified camera and when i do that you see a lot more detail and saturation in the red hydrogen alpha emissions i recently put a tutorial up on my patreon page about how I do this. And this is what the image looked like after I stitched all of those exposures together and added my final edits. Guys, did I tell you I published a book? Yeah, I probably did. It's called Photographing the Night Sky. It is the encyclopedic guide to landscape astrophotography. And you can purchase it from my website, alimonisphotography.com which is hosted by the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. Now I've said it many times before guys, but I would not be a full-time landscape astrophotographer if it wasn't for my Squarespace website. It's where I sell my book, it's where I sell my astro workflow Lightroom presets, and it's also where I sell my calendar at the end of the year. So having an online shop allows me to make money so that I can continue chasing my passion. I don't have to worry about making money from the photographs I take. I take the photographs I take because I want to. It's my passion and I love it. You can also use Squarespace as a normal website. You can have a blog on there. You can also have galleries to show off your images. You can embed YouTube videos and upload videos directly to Squarespace. And there are even members only access areas. Something I've yet to try, but I'm definitely thinking about it. If you'd like to give Squarespace a try, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Alan. Start with one of their award winning templates. Customize it to your heart's content. When you're happy with your website and you want it to go live, use the code Alan at the checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name with Squarespace.
Oh, all right, so I'm just working my way through this 24 millimeter Vertorama. I've taken the two panels for the foreground, two horizontal panels, both of them focus stacked at two minutes and 20. And now I'm doing my tracked exposures of the sky. Milky Way is perfectly in line with the tower. You can't quite see it, but after this, I think I'll try and do a nice wide panorama with a 24. Not looking forward to that walk back. <laughs> I'm trying not to think of that right now. Ah. Things are going well, I think. I'm quite happy with the exposures. I hope they turn out quite nice. Fingers crossed. So I was really pleased with how this four panel Vertorama turned out. The bottom panel was focus stacked and again I added the hydrogen alpha images to the sky. I just love the way the colours turned out and I think the inclusion of a bit more foreground gives it a much greater sense of depth compared to the image I took previously with the 40mm. And I just love the way the Milky Way lines up with those two towers in the middle. It's a very strong, dominant composition and everything just feels quite nicely balanced. I then captured this really wide panorama which helps to show off the grandness of the landscape. 10 images for the foreground and 10 images for the sky. The sky images were tracked and they were all captured at f2.5, 80 seconds and ISO 2500. I then started setting up to take the selfie that I planned but I was just exhausted and I wasn't really enjoying how the images were coming out. But then, so something spectacular has happened. I went to go set up the selfie silhouette shot and I didn't have any energy. I had some sweets. <laughs> and I set up the shot, I jumped in the frame and as I did that, the moon started rising. You can see it there. And it started casting its light on the side of those enormous rock formations. So I've changed composition because the selfie shot just wasn't great. So I've got a better foreground. Oh my God. And... Uh, <laughs> The shadows of the rock formations being cast onto the cliffs on the other side, and it looks spectacular. It's such an incredible moment, like a fleeting moment. Oh my god, my microphone. I'm gonna finish the shot. <laughs> Oh my god, that was spectacular. This location is stunning. Everything just went really well tonight. Had so many plans and they all went fairly smooth, I hope. I just didn't have time to comprehend how amazing that moonrise would be in the light on the landscape. I mean, talk about three-dimensionality and Dead Horse Point. As far as 3D as it gets, it just looks insane. Those two huge rock formations. The shadow is being cast onto the cliffs. Oh, what a moment. I'm so glad it happened because I was on my last bit of energy. And I was just about to take a single exposure, pack up and get out of here. And I saw a little bit of light on the tips of those rock formations. Wow. Oh, I needed something to get me back to the van with a smile on my face and a bit of energy and that was it. Wow. What a moment. Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in to another vlog. If you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.